Let's continue digging and let's add a 3x3 hammer item to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, right, we found some back and once more. And in this tour, we'll be adding a custom 3x3 hammer item. So basically just a pickaxe that is going to be able to mine a 3x3 area, which is commonly known in Minecraft modding as a hammer. Now for this, we will need a custom hammer class. So that's what we're going to start with. And we will be copying over quite a few things. Reason being that the code in and of itself is just a lot to write, though it is not as complicated. And of course, I will explain best to my ability. So in the item custom package, we're going to right click new Java class called the hammer item over here in this case. This will extend the mining tool item. We're going to hover over this create constructor matching super. We will remove the tag key and we will change this to block tags dot pickaxe mineable. That is exactly right, because basically the hammer is just going to be a huge pickaxe right? or a pickaxe that has a three by three area to be mined. And we will then copy over the a static method that I have prepared over here. And it looks kind of like this. This is the method that gets you a list of block positions. You can see this is the list to get the blocks that should be destroyed. It gets them by having a, an initial block position and a range. And the idea here is as follows, right? If I have, if I look at some blocks, right? And I mind this center block over here, what I just want is all of the surrounding blocks around it, right? In this case, this would be for range one because it goes into one block in each direction, including the corner pieces, right? If I were to have, if I had something like this and I mined this block and I had a range of two, obviously then this would be the entirety of all of the blocks that I would get returned. That's the whole idea. And the idea here is that that just basically facilitates this. You have a raycast shot out from the player. Idea here is that we look at the, first of all, if this is even a block that was hit with a raycast. If that's the case, then what I want to basically do is I want to look at what the side of the block you're looking at, right? If the if you look at the bottom of a block or at, from the top of the block, that means that we need to expand in the x and the wider and the in the x and the z direction because that means that you're looking. Well, I mean, you're looking from the top or the bottom. I don't know what else to explain, right? You need to expand in the x and the z direction. Otherwise, if you're looking north or south, you need to expand in the x and the y direction. And then east and west, you need to do the, the y and the z direction. That's the whole idea. That's basically what all of this does. Basically, this is all fairly simple in terms of co both code and logic. But you will need to understand sort of the 3D. You need to think about it in third in three dimensions, right? So, and also, by the way, highly recommended, you know, get the code, right? Like get the hammer item, get the, the event that we're going to have in a second. And literally just play around with it a little bit, right? Be like... Okay, I this doesn't make any sense to me, you know, play around with it. It'll be like, you know, maybe I don't think we need the X or whatever you want, might want to say. And then just play around with this a little bit. That is the best way to understand things like this. With this hammer item done, though, we can go into the mod items class and let's copy over, let's say, the pickaxe over here. And we're going to make this the pink garnet hammer. And this is going to be the pink garnet hammer right here, which is going to be a yes hammer item over here. We're going to keep the pickaxe item right here. However, we'll change the uh, damage over here, let's say to seven, but we're going to make this like really slow, like 3.4 or something like that so that it balances it out. Let's add it to the item group as well. So this is going to be the hammer and then we're going to do the rest of the stuff. So the translation, of course, very straightforward, right? I mean, literally just the pink hammer and then the texture, the item texture, also going to be available to you down below. That's going to be the pink garnet hammer right here. Need the data gen for the model. Very straightforward too. And then once we have that, now we can do the interesting stuff. And the interesting stuff is going to be, I know, an event. For the time being, we're going to put this in the event into the util package. So in the util package, we're going to right click new Java class called the hammer usage event. There we go. This will implement the player block break event and you can see it suggests to us three different things we want to choose the before event over here press tab to auto complete it implement the before block break method and there we go i'll be copying over the contents of this as they are they're not too crazy but and you will see uh, but we will go through all of them so 
The only thing we need to do here is import the hammer item class and there we go. This was done with the help of COFH core over here, the area effect events. I am pretty sure this is actually even a forge class, right? This isn't even a fabric class, but obviously that doesn't really matter. Uh, because I, ju I just need to help with the logic, right? I didn't need help with the code itself. The logic itself was basically what I needed. And that is under the uh, don't be a jerk license. So, you know, I'm hoping I'm not being a jerk and hopefully you're also not being a jerk when you use this. So keep that in mind. You see, we need this set of block positions. This is the already harvested blocks. I'll explain this in a second. First of all, we're basically, when does this even happen? Well, before a block breaks, this specific event is being called, right? So this method is called before a block is like fully broken. So what are we doing then? We're first of all asking, was this broken with a hammer? Yes. Okay. Are we on the server right here? Yes. So we were on the server inside of these curly brackets, right? So all of this is server. Then we asking, okay, the position that was just mined, right? Is this in the harvested block set? If it is, we just return a true. Awesome. And that means we destroy the block that we've just destroyed, like that just started breaking or that was just about to break. Awesome. If it's not in the set over here, then we're going to go through all of the different positions to be broken. That is the thing that we've seen in the hammer item, right? Get blocks to be destroyed. That's exactly the method that we've already added. And here in this case, we're going to do the range of one. Obviously, you can expand the range. Do note that if you expand the range too much, then, you know, it may or may not break the game at some point. So just keep that in mind. And with that done, right, we're looping through all of the positions. So once again, we have this, right? So we have, no, nope, not quite, but we have this, right? And we break this block over here. And now we, you know, loop through all of the positions. So we're now at this block, let's say, right? And what happens then is we say, okay, is the position that we're just evaluating the same as the position that we've just broken? Then we also just continue in this loop, right? So obviously we don't want to break the middle position again. Fair enough. And also, hey, is this like an actual correct block right to break right so if the top six blocks over here are stone and the bottom three are dirt then only the top six should be broken should also be self-explanatory so those are the two possible moments when we continue with this loop however let's say neither of this is actually the case therefore what happens is we add it to the set we then call this try break method and then we remove it from the set and some of you might say well that is that is really weird I agree with you. But here is the twist. When you call the try break block method, then let's say for this particular block, right? We've just like almost broken the block in the middle. And then we call this for the bro block on the left or on the right rather, right? So like the block to the right of the middle block. If we call this try break block over here, the same before block break method is called again because we're normally trying to break the block. Ergo, we've just added it to the set. We're calling this. Therefore, the method gets called again. We go through all of this. Yeah, we still have the hammer item. That's all true. But now the position that we just tried to break, which is this position right here with the X in it, that is now in the set, meaning that it contains this position. Therefore, we just return a true and we break that position. We then remove it again and go through this, go through the like the rest of the list, basically. Right. And this is the way that it's not going to end in catastrophe, because if we weren't doing this, then it would call the block break method for this one again. And then the issue is that, oh, okay, sure. And then it would go on and on and on and on and on and on, on until we get to a, uh, I mean, until the game crashes, right? Because in theory, this is basically, right, this line right here, the 37 over here, the try break block, it's kind of a recursive call. Like we're kind of recursively calling this particular method. It's not 100%, I mean, it is kind of recursive. Just, you know, just for the for the people among you who know what that means. Basically, it is kind of recursive, so we need some, somehow be able to break out of the recursive loop. But there you go. That is the hammer usage event method, or like, rather class over here, and how can we use that? Super freaking simple. Inside of the tutorial mod class, we simply want to call the player block, block break events dot, and then we the before over here, the event right here, dot register, and then passing in the new hammer usage event. That's literally it, all we need to do. And now the hammer usage event is properly registered in this case. So what we can then do is simply run data generation over here. This is going to generate us the item model JSON file. The rest is all added. And once that is through, well, it is as simple as going into the game and seeing if it works. So let's take a look. 
All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the pink hammer has been successfully added to the game. And you can see, there we freaking go. I can mine a 3x3 three three area. And depending on the, like, the edge or the face that I'm looking at on the block, that is the way that it expands. That's what I'm, you know, trying to basically tell you. Right? That's a three-dimensional thing. Obviously, we need to be able to... Well, make sure to that it expands in the correct direction. Now, what is really cool here is that, that this also works in creative mode because that's just the way that it's basically set up. I think that that is pretty freaking cool. But yeah, there you go. That is a 3x3 three three tool. In this case, a hammer added to Minecraft. Freaking awesome, man. In this one, obviously, very important. The code is all available down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom armor. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.